I mean, it, this is just, it's just nonsense. It, it, it's all propaganda. You could end this war very quickly. Um, you know, why uh, you, you keep, if you're the head of, of a country and you keep putting your, the more civilians that die, the greater, I mean, the more money that they're sent. I mean, one of the, you know, there's two reports out the, the most conservative says that Zelensky has already put over 100 million in offshore accounts. And one coming out of Brussels says he's got 850 million. Um, I mean, it, look, it, I strongly suggest if you want to help the people of Ukraine, don't send any money to the government. Give it to, you know, Red Cross or something like that. Then you actually go to the people. But any money you go, you send to Ukraine, um, they've been listed as the top five most corrupt governments in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and the difference, I think, with uh, uh, Western politicians, yeah, they're all corrupt. They, they want to get maybe 50 million, maybe 100 million before they get out. Uh, Ukrainians and Russians, no, nah, that's not good enough. They want to be a billionaire when they leave. <laughs> Um, and do you know what's what's ridiculous, hilarious to me, actually, you go to the World Economic Forum website, you go to the United Nations website, they're all raising money for Ukraine. <laughs> Donate oh, here. Yeah. And this is going to go to the people. I don't think so. These people are literally killing people with their vaccines. No, not vaccines. Uh, and, and, you know, creating wars, creating recessions creating the collapse of society. And I, I truly think that they, they want to collapse the United States because. Oh, yes. No, no, even uh, that's part of, that's one of uh, Klaus Schwab's eight points. Uh, the United States will no longer be a superpower. It will be shared uh, among nations by the United Nations. They want that. This is why they put Biden in there because he would sign away near Go ahead, you know, I'll give you a lollipop if you sign this. I mean, oh, okay, you know, I mean, you know, it's questionable. I mean, there was an old, I mean, the joke over here was there was an old rap song, you know, will the real sl Slim Shady please stand up? Um, and they're basically saying that about, you know, will the real President of the United States please stand up? <laughs> you know, is this not Biden? I, I, well, I wanted to talk to you about that because we've had, we've had a, a few people hypothesizing over who that might be. A lot of people think that Obama's actually still pulling the strings behind the scenes. I'm not so sure it's Obama. I mean, although he would cheer it, yes. Um, but uh, I think it's much more sinister uh, behind, the, behind the curtain. Um, Obama, like I said, he didn't even attend 65% of his morning briefings. Uh, I was in Palm Beach in in Florida, uh, and Obama flew in to <clears throat> and parked in Trump's um, private jet spot. Uh, this is before Trump was was president, and to go play golf with with Tiger Woods. Uh, and Trump landed, and he saw that U.S. one was in his private hangar. And he started moving up to it. And the Secret Service came out and said, you move one inch closer and we will open fire. I mean, it was like, is this high school? What's going on here? You know, um, and he did it just to, to aggravate Trump. And that's that's before he was president. Uh, I mean, these. But when you say you, you think know, it's more sinister, what do you mean? I think it's more of these neocons have really gotten a hold of things. Um, you know, it's it's people attached to like Victoria Newland, and I mean, if you look at it, she's been there for every one of these fake wars. Um, she was there in in Maidan handing out sandwiches to the protesters. Um, uh, they, uh, I would recommend watching a film uh, from Oliver Stone, uh, Ukraine on Fire. Uh, and there are the, the allegations, you know, they went to her and trying to get the U.S. involved. She says, well, one or two people dead. That doesn't matter. If 100 die, then then let me know. Exactly 100 were killed. You know, it, it's just and, and 
the the snipers turned out to be uh, not Yanukovych's people, but uh, their own people that they staged on buildings that they had occupied, shooting their own protesters as a false flag, mm -hmm. and then to blame Yanukovych. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it, there's I mean evidence of uh, MI seventeen or MH six seventeen flight being uh, crashed in Ukraine. Uh, that it was with a, an old uh, Russian missile that they had, and they tried to blame that on the separatists. Well, why would the separatists shoot down a plane, you know, to begin with? Uh, what was their advantage? The only advantage was from the Ukrainian side of the, to, to get the U.S. involved and say, oh, the Russians did that. Um, it, it, there's nothing you can trust from there. I mean, it, it's everything you got to look at it. Um, I had one person tell me they have searched the entire web looking for photographs of all these people that were killed in Buka in Ukraine, and he can't find it. Um, so, I, you know, who knows? I mean, it, the propaganda in war is always dangerous because both sides engage in it. Yes. And, um, uh, I, well, I, I was speaking to some people in Europe last night who were saying that that they were really sticking by the fact that they feel Russians don't engage in propaganda. I, I think you've got to always be cautious of both sides. Uh, but the Russians seem to uh, bring the facts. They go in, they they find what's really going on on the ground. They release that information to the public in their own way. Um, but but to say that no country engages in propaganda during war is not, I don't think that's true. No, I mean, there it's, you know, the Russians will, you know, put on the air things that support their position. I mean, the same way, you know, the, I think the difference is that we're dealing with with the Ukrainians is that they're actually manufacturing uh, mm. events. Mm. Uh, and so that's a little different level of... Uh, of propaganda. Uh, it's one thing to cherry pick the news and say, oh, see, this is what the other side did or whatever. But when you actually go in uh, and start doing this, it's crazy. I mean, there are videos of Ukrainians. Uh, actually, I watched one that was horrible. I mean, it, 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 they took a Russian soldier and they crucified him. And they put nails through his hands onto, and then set him on fire. I mean, there are videos of this stuff. Uh, I mean, it's just, it, it's unbelievable. The, the, but it's the Russians that are the ones that are creating war crimes, not the Ukrainians. Mm. Um, uh, there's two, you know, French soldiers that had gone there and volunteered and both have left disgusted. Uh, and one said he saw more war crimes than they were all by the U Ukrainians. Um, yes, I've seen videos like that. I've seen videos where people say, I had no idea what I was stepping into. This is shocking what these people are doing. Uh, yeah, so I mean, look, it, the hatred it, just goes back a long time. I mean, uh, I had meetings back in U Yugoslavia before it all broke up, you know, and they're talking about, oh, well, they killed 600 of us and they threw us in a, in a common grave. And I thought I missed something on the news. I said, excuse me, when did they do this? Said, oh, about, you know, 700 years ago. I said, oh, yes, that one, you know. <laughs> um, but yes. this is what you're dealing with over there. I mm. mean, the our countries aren't that old. Mm. Uh, <laughs> over there, they, they remember things, I mean, going centuries. Yes. Uh, yes. And it, it's much different. Um, so so and, on, the, on the war cycle, and 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 what we're seeing in the coming year or so. I mean, you, you and I spoke about the fact that we would be probably seeing an economic collapse very, very soon. There have been multiple people that have predicted the same. How long do people have? That? I guess people want to know what to prepare for, Martin. Well, I, uh, our computer is showing that really the war cycle kicks up next year. Mm. Now, what is that? That's probably still more on the civil unrest side and um, isolated type pockets. All right. It's not saying that we're heading into World War Three with nukes flying all over the place. When we get to that level, we're, we're probably after 2024, you know, 25 to 27 period. Um, 
my concern more is that is what comes in 2024. Uh, Putin's up for re-election then. Uh, I question whether or not he will stand again um, with his health and things of this nature. And, oh. and that may well, if be... that's true as well, though. Yeah, I mean, also, you have the U.S. election 2024. I mean... Uh, Zelensky's up in 2024. I mean, it's a, it's, it's one heck of a year. Mm-hmm. Um, and all this propaganda against Putin, you have to really understand he's probably the most rational person out there. The second tier are the ones that are threatening nuclear war and things of this nature. Putin is, is more nostalgic. Uh, and what I mean by that, he respects uh, Kiev was the original place where the uh, Russians began, the Rus, uh, and they were <clears throat> thrown out of there basically by the Mongol invasion in, in uh, 1240. Uh, so in Crimea, you still have a maybe 10, 15 percent of the population are Tartars, for leftover people from the Mongol invasion. Um, so to him, that's where Russia began. So that's kind of what he says that, uh, you know, we're brothers and things of this nature. He's a little bit more nostalgic. The, the guys behind him are not. They, I think they would, in a heartbeat, if they were in power, they would use a tactical nuke and just take out Kiev. Um, so, you know, I think you have to be careful what you wish for. Uh, he's not a madman. He is clearly much more... Um, rational. Uh, when, the U- when you invade a country like the U.S. went into Iraq, the first thing you do is you take out the power, you, then you take out the communications, and you attack the water supply. He's done none of that. Okay, mm-hmm. so That shows he was not interested in conquering Ukraine. But on the other side, my sources in, in, in Russia are basically saying that the second tier fear thinks he's too weak. Uh, right. too passive. So my concern is all this stuff, oh, you know, overthrow Putin. You better be careful what you're asking for. Because the second tier is not is is rational, perhaps, more uh, nationalistic, uh, and would, you know, have not, you know, would not really think twice. Mm-hmm. I mean, using a tactical nuke on Kiev from their perspective, take that out and then stand up and say, okay, fine. Are you next? Call the bluff. Uh, is the West going to file? Uh, then you're going to have a, you know, one, people have to understand how significant the weapons have become. Hiroshima was 0.1 or 0.2 of a megaton. They have 100 megaton um, bombs. One in Britain could wipe out the entire island. Okay, so, and that's the, the difference of what <laughs> World War II compared to today. Hmm. So from their perspective, a tactical nuke is smaller. Okay, so it would just take out Kiev and, and the surrounding area. It wouldn't take out the whole country. Uh, so in saying that they would, you know, launch a tactical nuke, would just take out the resistance uh, and then say, okay, fine, who's next? Do you really want to go this way? Uh, Mm. So I think that what you have to understand is that there is a different level here. Um, The U.S. has its neocons uh, behind the scenes, like, you know, John McCain used to be, uh, Hillary, uh, you know, Graham, et cetera. Russia also has its neocons. And so does China. And, and these are the people that, that want war. Um, they want to eliminate their, you know, the enemy. So uh, we're not talking about... It seems the, like the enemy is the people here, though. I mean, it, I feel they feel... I don't, I don't feel they feel. I know they feel that humanity... We need to reduce the global population. We need to do everything that we can to control the population for the sake of climate change. And this is their new religion. This is the whole point of Agenda 2030. 
it's all going to be yes. driven by this climate change agenda. So talk to us a little bit about climate change and how they plan to weave that into their plans. Well, I'm not sure the neocons uh, are interested in actually weaving that in. They're more interested in eliminating their, their, uh, their enemies. However, it fits in as far as uh, the problem here they had to remove Trump because he was against this climate change stuff. Next, they, they, on the agenda, they had to remove Putin. All right. And the third is Jing and China. Uh, I mean, you can Google it. I mean, George Soros came out and even said that, uh, you know, China has to replace its leadership. He's a threat to, to civilization. Uh, I mean, I can tell you, you know, today, um, I know that, you know, uh, George Soros is in Berlin with Bill Browder and they're pitching some. I mean, they work together. Uh, it, it, these people are all in cahoots together. Uh, and Soros, I think, is is on the same agenda with uh, the WEF. But then oh, you have certainly. the neocons that want um, to actually uh, wipe out China and 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 the political system in, in, in Russia. Um, I mean, I find it really hypo hypocrisy to say that, uh, oh, Russia's authoritarian, et cetera, we should go, you know, and he's really more like a dictator. Europe is the same, all right? Putin is, is elected by the people in, in parliament. So is the head of state in Europe. The, you know, they, it's the same exact design. If, if you know, it's worse, actually. Um, and that system was designed by Schwab. You get to vote for an MP, but, it, but an MP has no power to overrule the commission. Mm -hmm. The commission is the one that makes the rules. The head of the, of the EU never stands for election. So it's, it's a, a fake democracy. This is really what they want to create with us. We'll have the right to vote for our local congressman who's going to, you know, maybe clean the streets or something. Um, but as far as any other power, no, you will we'll have zero power. That's what they want. Uh, and it's the same system that they set up at the U.N. So this, this climate change is just the excuse for this one world government. Yeah. And. You can also look on my site. I have a clip there of uh, the old French president Holland standing in parliament with uh, Merkel explaining that that was the whole purpose of the EU, one government to eliminate European war. Uh, this is that same philosophy and they it's been going around for a long time. And, and I said it's absolute nonsense. Uh, there was sure there was one government, the Roman Empire, and how many civil wars did they have? <laughs> you know, uh, one government doesn't solve these things, but they have convinced themselves maybe because they get power and they see that. And, and of course, and then the people, the masses that buy all of this will think, oh, yes, that's a good solution. It's a yeah. peaceful solution, even in regards to this treaty. Oh, of course, we want we want a one world approach. The only reason this lasted two years and not two weeks like they told us it would was because we all did different things. If we all did the same thing moving forward, if we all lock down as a whole globe, destroy the, the entire economy, we'll be fine in a couple of weeks the part i want to the, the thing i want to address with you is the the economy right now we're talking about interest rates in australia we've been told will rise up to 12 percent by the end of the year the inflation is through the roof what's what can we expect in terms of the economy over the next year or so particularly seeing that we're looking at war cycles coming up well you have to understand that um the entire <coughs> keynesian system has collapsed and what that is, is that you can raise interest rates to stop inflation or lower interest rates to stimulate. Oh, very nice theory, but that applies only for a speculative boom, not shortages. All right, we were in shortages, raising interest rates only makes it worse. It's not gonna make it better. But also it's why everything is collapsing. In the thirties, when this was proposed, um, Back then, President Herbert Hoover 
was running balanced budgets. So the whole idea was you can run a deficit to stimulate the economy. All right. So um, that's where all this stuff came from. Raising interest rates and lowering interest rates was because we were the speculative people. All right. But today, government is the biggest borrower out there, not us. So if they raise interest rates to stop inflation, does the politician say, oh, gee, we should spend less because that's what they want us to do? No. Um, inflation goes up and it's not our fault. It's the central bank. So the central banks are kind of in a, a, a tough spot. If they don't raise interest rates, they get blamed um, for the inflation when the inflation has got nothing to do with them. So the system is collapsing. There's no way any central bank can prevent this. The lockdowns created the shortages uh, and that set everything in motion. And it, it's just a complete disaster. Uh, and now you're going to, you know, uh, you're talking about lockdowns again with monkeypox, like in, in Brussels. And, and I mean, it, these people, I mean, you're, you're basically wiping out an awful lot of, of society. And that then justifies the guaranteed basic income uh, solution to replace your pension fund, which also defaults. Uh, but it, it's, it's just really completely uh, messing up everything in the, in the economy per se. We're never going to get back to any kind of a growth. And, and, and these sanctions that Biden has put on and everybody else is rushing around to, to, comp, you know, to copy, you're severing uh, Russia from the world economy. Now, <clears throat> you don't think China is looking at that? So should a Chinese be investing in U.S. bonds? Gee, if we get in a dispute, uh, they're going to just confiscate all our money too. Mm. Uh, you, you've, you're tearing the world economy apart. Globalism's done. It's finished. Um, you know, the, the free movement of capital is what creates jobs and economic growth. That's done. It's gone. All right. So economic growth perspective, we're declining uh, all the way really into, into about 2037. I mean, there'll be some ups and downs here and there, but um, you are that's it's going to take that long before we, we get a new regime and, and reassess what we've done wrong uh, and rebuild it. And how can people prepare Martin for that? Because we're that that's a good over 20 years. Yeah, I mean, is this is basically what's unfortunately we have politicians that are not about to admit that they've ever made a mistake. Uh, so that's basically what we're dealing with. It's, it's there. Uh, once politicians got involved in COVID and then people die from vaccines, do you think they're ever going to say, oh, gee, so sorry about that? Well, of no. course not, because they will, they'll be tri tried for what they've done. I know I always ask you this, but for the audience, is, is gold something that will likely be a safe option for them you you told me last time it's good to have some cash on hand uh yeah look the cash i think uh after 2024 you're looking at something different as far as physical money is per uh per se i mean even the cryptocurrencies i'd be very careful about because like i say if there's war the first thing that goes is power grid how are you going to use it mm. um I would recommend like the old silver coins for small denominations, things of this nature. But if you look at uh, the German hyperinflation, um, it was all tangible assets that survived. When, when they you know, reissued the, the, the Deutschmark in 1925, it was backed by real estate. Uh, so uh, the real estate survives, the, the, the tangible assets, if it's um, gold, silver, uh, you know, and antiques, um, uh, real estate things. That, oh, these are the things that actually are uh, survive, you know, in various different levels. Um, 
it's it's the cash in the banks that that become a risk. Uh, the cryptocurrencies I would not be um, involved in because you turn once you turn off the power, forget it. Mm-hmm. And the government can confiscate it because they know everybody that has it. Uh, so it, I would just be very very concerned about that sort of thing. But um, <clears throat> uh, I think you have to understand we're also going into these food shortages. Uh, which had been uh, created, but then we also have really global cooling at the same time. Um, and, you know, pay attention to even the volcanoes because, um, you know, you got three of them going off in Alaska the, and all of a sudden there's a, a bunch that are starting to go off. Um, if you get too many of them and they, that's what they create these, what is called a uh, volcanic winter. Uh, there's an old book from, you know, uh, uh, the year without a summer, you know, when Krakatoa went up, it snowed in July in New York City. Uh, it, it throws so much ash up into the into the sky that it reflects the, the sunlight. So crops fail. When the crops fail, then what happens? You get food shortages, then you get malnutrition, and then that's when the disease cycle kicks up. It's, it's all interlinked. 